As she said, I'm Janelle. I'm a senior in mechanical engineering. And for my project, I um, identified a problem that we were having here at IPFW. And so the project title is Organizing a Program to Increase IPFW Engineering Department Visits. It's a mouthful. So just a brief summary of what we're going to talk about. First, we're going to kind of briefly go over what I did last year, the problem that I defined, and what the planned solution for that was. And then kind of the behind the scenes planning of the project before the actual visit day. And then we'll talk about the visit day, the actual project that I did. And then I did a post survey with those students, so the results from that, and then sustaining the project into the future. So the problem that we defined was that currently there were pretty limited opportunities available for high school students to come and actually visit the IPFW engineering departments. And so I wanted to kind of address that problem. And also along with that, there was no system really set up to like track those students. So the students that were coming, finding out which of them actually did enroll in IPFW, there was no really system set up for that. So I wanted to kind of start getting some statistics for them to use in the future. <coughs> so the planned solution was to organize a recruitment day for those students that will allow the high school students to come in, visit the IPFW engineering department for the day. And then the program can be used in the future to kind of track those students. So, you know, if I know what year they graduate in, I can tell you in this year whether or not they did end up enrolling here and some other statistics along with that. And the goal of the project was to help the IPFW engineering department. You know, that was the primary goal. Secondarily, it did help those high school students that were able to come and visit the engineering department. But the primary goal was to help the engineering department. And by doing that, it would increase the number of students visiting the department, hopefully increase the number that eventually do enroll and give the department statistics on those students. So these are just kind of the overall basics of the project. We're going to go into in depth in all of this. But I invited high school students to visit the IPFW engineering department, organize students and faculty volunteers for the day. The actual visit day, we had a information session, student panel, faculty panel, and then we toured labs and did a couple lab demonstrations for the students, and then the post survey that I did. So planning the visit, the kind of first step was I had to pick a date, and so this was kind of a long process, trying to find a day when the spaces that I needed were available to me when I could get the volunteers that I needed. So it was kind of a lot of back and forth. It took longer than I expected. But the date that I ended up picking was March 12th. One thing to note about that date, I was going back and forth trying to figure it out. This date was during spring break, which was kind of nerve wracking for me because I was like, am I going to be able to get volunteers to come in that day? It ended up all working out. I had some really great people come and help me. So after I picked the date, then I had to reserve my spaces. I reserved three or four, I think, in Wald just because I didn't know how many students were going to come. And for those panels, you know, if I was going to need a larger space, those aren't really available in the engineering department. So I reserved some in Wald, and then I also reserved the lab facilities in the engineering building for that date. Inviting the students, I got some help on this. The first thing that I did was we have a student success center in the engineering building, so Dawn Renner works in there. She helped me out a lot with this. And she took the flyers that I made, brought them to a couple different IPFW events, like the Multicultural Visit Day. They had an engineering table there, and so she handed some out to those students. She was visiting a couple local high schools, so she brought those there as well to directly talk to students about it. And then I myself, I did, if you go to, I don't know how many of you have heard of Project Lead the Way, but it's kind of a technology education courses for students that are interested in fields like engineering. So I went on their website, and you can do a search to see which schools have those programs. So I put in Fort Wayne, and then I did a search of a 50-mile radius. And I got over 30 schools, and I was able to get the contact information for all those schools. So I sent out emails to the contacts that I had for them and sent them kind of the basics of it and the flyer so that then they could reach their students directly for that. This is the flyer that I did for that. You can see um, right here. I did put together an email for it just to kind of correspond with those schools, with students. And the primary reason that I used it was, I'm going to talk about it in a second, but when the students registered, I had set up a Qualtrics form, so they needed the link to it. So if they didn't have the link directly, they could email me and say, hey, I want to sign up for this. And so then I could use that email and send them the link to the registration form. So like I just said, I had an online Qualtrics form for registering the students. I kind of got some basic information from them when they signed up. 
I got their name, their address, so you can kind of see where they're coming from, their email address for continued correspondence with them, their expected graduation year, so whether they were seniors, juniors, sophomores, or freshmen, and what major they were interested in, just kind of, you know, not necessarily for the visit day, but for those statistics that we talked about. And I wanted to find out whether they already had been admitted to IPFW or if they had not, if they were just coming here kind of as a first time thing. And so then I had to organize my volunteers for the day. So there was kind of two components. I needed some faculty volunteers and I also needed student volunteers. So my faculty volunteers, I got three faculty members that came from my panel. We'll talk about that in a little bit. I had two lab technicians that helped me out that day. And also Dawn Renner, who I had mentioned previously, she was there that day kind of to you know, make sure that the labs that I needed were unlocked. She helped with some food and stuff like that. My student volunteers, I had four students that were on my panel, and then I also got seven other students that came to, you know, when they showed up in Walb Student Union to point them in the right direction to the room, when we moved from Walb to the engineering building, kind of escorting them around. And so I was super grateful for all of these volunteers because, you know, it was over spring break and they did it solely to help me out and be good people, so I was very appreciative of that. So the actual visit day, I did have 16 students that registered, which, you know, some people might say, well, that's kind of low. And I was really happy with that, though, because with going back and forth, picking a date, having to get the flyer organized and whatever, I actually only put out the information for it probably a month before the actual visit day. So in that month, I did get 16 students to register. So I was pretty happy with that. For a first time thing, I thought that was a pretty good number, too. The actual day, I had 10 of those 16 students actually showed up. So there were a couple of them that didn't show up for whatever reason. So there were 10 that day, which still worked out really well. And when they showed up, each of them got a bag of information. So I had gone to, we actually are two departments in the engineering building. There's the Department of Mechanical and Civil Engineering and then of Computer and Electrical. So I got information from both of those departments, kind of the basics of each department and then um, I also went to admissions and they kind of gave me the information, you know, the basics to applying to IPFW, the tuition information, and then as well as some of their freebie stuff, you know, the magnets, the pens that you get when you go to all college visits. I got some of those for those students as well. So they all took home one of those bags. So these are just kind of some of those statistics on those students. So the orange bars that you see are the students that actually registered for the event, and then the green bars are the ones that actually showed up. So I had two seniors that registered and showed up. I had five juniors that registered, three that showed. Um, sophomores, I had two and one, and then I had a pretty high number of freshmen that uh, registered, and then four that did actually attend that day. So there was a pretty w wide range of students that showed up. So knowing what years they graduated, you know, like the seniors that graduate this year in the fall, I can, they can look and see, oh, did they enroll or not? And then the juniors the year after that. And also along with these younger students, since we have their emails, you know, if events like this came up in the future, you can email them and say, hey, we have this going on if you're still interested in IPFW and want to come. Um, this one right here was kind of their major of interest. So the same thing, the orange bars and the green bars. And this is pretty typical of our engineering departments. Mechanical is our highest student population in the engineering department. So it didn't really surprise me that that was the most students that were interested in the day and then kind of down the line. And this one was kind of interested, interesting to me. I asked them whether they had been admitted or not. So four of the students that registered had already been admitted to IPFW and 12 had not. So, you know, if it's pretty safe to say that if they haven't been admitted yet, they're probably in that younger population. And then it's kind of cool that, you know, this is kind of their first visit, their first contact with IPFW. And it was a neat for me to be able to reach them in that regards. And so this is actually the schedule for the visit day that I had to put together. So I started in Walb Student Union. I kind of just lumped it. Everything that I did in Walb, I did at one time and everything in the engineering department I did later in the day. So we started check-in at 11.30 that morning. So they had kind of a half an hour window to sign up, get that baggie of information. And then after that, we did the welcome and schedule for the day. And then I did a really brief information session. So I made a PowerPoint of kind of some of those, you know, the main facts of the engineering department that they might want to know, that we um, do senior design projects, that we have co-ops available to students, 
these are the majors that we have, just kind of the basic information. And then I had a half hour student panel that we'll talk a little bit about, and then the faculty panel. And then we walked over to the engineering building, and actually when we were in the engineering building during that kind of break period, we had some cookies and fruit and water set up for them. So that was one thing when we were talking about this visit day, we were like, okay, do we need to get them food or not? And we kind of set it up so that it was, you know, right around lunchtime that it started so they could eat right before they came. By the time it was done, it was supper time, so we just kind of gave them that snack in the middle of the day to kind of tie them over. And then we went ahead and we did mechanical and civil engineering lab tours, and then we did the electrical and computer ones, and then we did a post survey at the end. And one other thing to note about this, when I originally organized this, so I had those 16 students, and many of them brought parents with them, and so it was going to be a pretty large group to do these lab tours. So I did initially have them split into two groups. So I was going to have one group do these tours first and these second, and the other group, while the first group was here, they were going to be here, and then they were going to switch to the mechanical ones. Since some students didn't show up that day, and also after the panels before the lab tours, there were a couple more that had to leave for other commitments that they had that day. So I had eight students that actually did the lab tours, and since it was a smaller group, I ended up just lumping them together, which worked out a lot better that there was less shuffling of students. And, but I was prepared for a larger group. We just ended up switching it the day of. And so then I have kind of some pictures for here. This is the check-in and the information center. So up in the top left, those were two of my student volunteers. And you can see on that table are those baggies that they got. So the baggies came from admissions and the information in them came from admissions and the departments. And then this was the information session that I did at the beginning. So just a brief PowerPoint that was up on the wall that I gave them the information for that. And then we went into our student panel. So I had four students that were on my panel. I was able to get one from each of the four disciplines, mechanical, civil, electrical, and computer that were there that day. And I came up with some potential questions for that because you know, I've been to these things before. I know when you sit there and you say, does anybody have any questions? A lot of times the students aren't going to speak up at first. And so I had some questions ready that if nobody had any questions, we were prepared for that situation. So you know, I think we did end up using most of these. So what ways are the students involved in campus and the department? Um, what student organizations are they involved in? What were they doing for their senior design projects? Just to kind of get the student's perspective on IPFW engineering. And so this, uh, these are pictures from my panel. So I had Brandon, who's here. He was great. <laughs> I actually, one of the students, it was my sister, she came to this thing and she's like, Brandon was so funny. Like, I could listen to him talk all day. <laughs> um, so Brandon was there and then James and Dara and Chris helped me out that day. Um, my faculty panel, I had three faculty members that were there that day. Dr. Yunus, who's here today, he was representing the mechanical department. He also was the head of the mechanical and civil department of engineering, so that was nice that we had a head of a department there. We had Dr. Chen for civil, and Dr. Liu was representing computer and electrical. And again, I had some potential questions ready for that faculty panel as well. So primarily those ones, um, a lot of the parents wanted to you know, ask questions like, you know, what kind of co-ops are available for my student and what makes your department better than these other ones that we're looking at and things like that. But I did have some questions pre prepared for them as well. And here's a picture from that. So we had Dr. Liu, Dr. Yunus, and Dr. Chen there for the day. And then we went over to the engineering building and we started with our civil engineering lab tour. So uh, James Wrights, who was on my student panel, he's currently finishing up his civil engineering degree, but he does um, work as the civil engineering lab technician. So he helped me out with that. We went to the soil laboratory and then we showed them a little bit of surveying equipment. So in the soil lab, we this is actually what we did first. There's Another lab that's a little bit further away on campus where they actually mix up concrete and due to time, we didn't want to spend the time to walk all the way over there. So they just did a really brief kind of PowerPoint to show them that process and what they could expect. They do um, a canoe competition. So there were some pictures of the canoe that these students actually designed and made for that. And then up here, you can see the one student has in his hand two different samples. And so one was actually a really heavy concrete and one was lighter. And so they were able to pass those around and see the difference and the kinds of things that they could expect in civil engineering labs. 
And then right outside that room, he had set up some surveying equipment for them, which I don't know a whole lot about, but he had that set up, talked to them a little bit about it. I don't, you can't really see it, but there's this out in the front, and then there's another that's further away that he set up, had set up, and they talk to each other or something. Like I said, I don't really know. <laughs> um, and so then the students were able to look through that and kind of get an idea of surveying and civil engineering. And so then we went to the mechanical engineering lab tours and we had Jason Moyer who's also here with us today. He is our mechanical engineering lab technician and he helped me out with these. So we did four labs, the 3D printer lab, materials, the fluids, and the machine shop that's downstairs in the engineering building. So with the 3D printers, there's actually two printers in that room, so both of them were running. This is just a picture of the one. It was easier to get pictures of this one from where I was standing. And so both of these were running that they could see the 3D printers in action, and they also had some samples of things that had been printed at IPFW that they were able to pass around the room and see. And you know, even the dads kind of got into this one. They all think this kind of stuff's pretty cool. Uh, in the materials lab, we kind of talked about all the machines in there. There's quite a few in there. And the one lab demonstration that we did was we ran this, it's called a Tinius Olson machine. And so it takes a sample and you put it in there. You apply a force to it and it stretches it apart and then it ends up breaking. So none of the students were expecting the really loud noise and they all jumped and I was standing in the back, saw it all, it was pretty funny. So that one was interesting for them just because they actually got to see a real life. You know, this is what I can expect to do in a lab here. We went into the fluids lab. This one we didn't have any demonstrations in, but we just kind of talked about some of the equipment that was set up in there. The one in the back of this picture, you can see the big blue thing. It's a wind tunnel. So we talked a little bit about that and about the heating apparatus that's over there. And then we went downstairs into the machine shop. And so John Mitchell helped us out with these. And this is like one of the machines that he talked about for them, just kind of if they take the machining course, they can design and actually make the parts. And I believe this machine he actually ran for them. So you, if you see like these panels that are over there, that's actually what they used to kind of program it. So we kind of showed them how that whole system worked and they were all pretty interested in that. And then we went to the electrical engineering labs. And these I actually had students that helped me out, um, Charles and Chris who was on my panel earlier in the day. And we did the energy lab down here. and. From my perspective, these labs were a little bit harder to plan just because, you know, in the civil and, and civil and mechanical ones, it's very physical. You can actually see what's happening. Electrical and computer is kind of a lot more, you know, off in space somewhere that you can't really see it. So these were a little bit harder to demonstrate stuff, but we did come up with a couple things. So in the energy lab, there's this big board and you can make circuits on it and run it. So they were able to see, he kind of explained the circuit that he designed for them and then on the computer you were able to run the simulation and get results out of it. So they were able to see that. And then also in that lab is this um, electric vehicle car. And so this actually is a senior design project and it's an interdisciplinary one. So not only were you able to show them, um, you know, on the electrical engineering aspect of this, but it's also a mechanical engineering project as well. So showing them, you know, if you're doing a senior design project, you might not only be working with students in your discipline, but you can work with students in other disciplines on projects such as this. Um, the computer engineering lab tours, Brandon helped us out with this. And we did the RF microwave lab and the robotics and control lab. So in the RF microwave lab, again, a lot of the stuff in this lab was kind of locked up, so we didn't get to see a whole lot of it, but Brandon was able to come up with some stuff out on the table and kind of talk to them a little bit about this. And one of the things we kind of talked to them about in this lab was the opportunities available for research. There are a lot of students, I believe, that do research in this lab. So telling them, you know, if that's something that you're interested in, those opportunities are available at IPFW. They're available really early on in your careers. So making them aware of that. And then in the robotics and control lab, um, if I remember correctly, I'm pretty sure this is a senior design project too, that they kind of have three cameras set up on this stand and there's, um, they had a grid up on the wall behind it. So like as a person or whatever is moving past it, you can kind of track the speed of it based on how many frames you were getting out of the camera. So this was another kind of real world application. And we also talked a little bit about back in this corner, there's a little robot. It wasn't running, but we talked about that this was another senior design project that students did. 
And so then we went back down into the lobby and we did our post survey. So the goal of this was kind of to assess how successful the program was that day, kind of get the students' feedback on it. And then the feedback that I got from them in the future can be used to improve the program. So this is actually the survey that I put up for them. I know it's kind of not clear, so I'm going to show you all the questions in a second. But mainly I just wanted to give them a lot of space to write so that I can get their feedback. So I asked them five questions. One was, had they ever previously visited the IPFW engineering department? Um, what activities did they feel were beneficial? How could their visit have been improved? And then I wanted to find out how they heard about the event, just to kind of figure out which of those avenues that I went down was successful and what they should continue to do in the future. And then I also asked them before attending, how committed were they to attending IPFW, you know, if they already knew they were coming here and they were just coming for a last visit before they actually would show up in the fall, or if they were brand new and had no idea about IPFW engineering, and then after attending, if that perception kind of changed for them. So like I said, there were a couple of those 10 students that came that day that had to leave early, so I collected eight responses from them. The really interesting thing from this that I found was that of those eight responses, only one of the students had actually visited the IPFW engineering department before. So I was able to reach seven new students that had never visited our department and give them the information so that hopefully in the future they would come here. Um, kind of some of their results from it. The beneficial activities, most of them said that the lab tours and demonstrations were the most beneficial to them. You know, sitting in a room listening to people talk is not always, always that exciting. And so being able to actually see what they could expect to do in real world applications of engineering, I think was what drew them to that. And then also the one student said that the faculty panel was really important to them. Um, they suggested for improvements to the visit to have more audience interaction, so maybe some hands-on thing for them to do, and also include more demonstrations if possible. Um, I asked them how they heard about the event. So four people said that they heard from a family member or a friend, um, two from one of those IPFW outreach events like the Multicultural Visit Day, and two heard from schools, so the Project Lead the Way schools that I visited. And one thing to note about this is that while this one seems a lot higher. Um, three of the students that showed up that day, um, I knew directly. One was my sister, one was my cousin, and one was my sister's boyfriend. So this is a little bit biased, so keeping that in mind for the future. But you know, that is another way, word of mouth, getting stuff out about it. And the other thing, how committed were you to attending IPFW? I put some of their quotes up here. Um, you know, the very first one that I have up there, they said they were very likely before, and now they're pretty much guaranteed. Uh, one said that they were open to attending, so my guess is that was one of those students that was a freshman that this was probably the first college visit that they ever did in their life. But, you know, at least now this is on their radar and they can keep that in mind for in the future. One person said that they were committed um, before. One said that they were about 75% committed and one said after 80%. So, you know, we did increase that a little bit. Um, Another said before they weren't very committed and they're now going to at least take it into consideration. So that was a, another positive. And then the very last one, they said they weren't sure where to go, but after the tour, now they wanted to come here. So for me, that was a really positive thing. I was like, you know, I was able to reach these students, help the engineering department, help the students kind of figure out what they wanted to do in the future. Um, sustainability. So continuing this into the future, this is something that can be continued into the future fairly readily. I had a meeting earlier this week with um, the dean, the associate dean, several faculty members. Uh, Don Renner was there. So we talked about kind of what I did as well as continuing it into the future. And they were really excited about, you know, keeping this going into the future. They thought it was a really good thing for the department. Um, we were kind of talking about how to implement it. You know, nothing's really set in stone right now. Um, we were talking about having the Student Success Center kind of run it because there were some things when I was designing this, so like when I had to get the rooms reserved, it was more difficult for me just because I was a student, whereas if a faculty member was doing that, it would be a little bit easier for them. So having the Student Success Center kind of run it with the addition of helping or having students help them. So we talked about having, there's several um, student chapters of uh, organizations in the engineering department. So like ASME, the mechanical engineering, there's a civil engineering one, an electrical one, there's the Society of Women Engineers. So we talked about having each of those um, groups have create a position, we talked about calling it like an outreach coordinator that would 
kind of be in charge of helping with events such as this. So getting the words out to students that are I IPFW to get volunteers for the event, um, having them help get the word out about it. So kind of making it a dual thing where not only, you know, it's not just a faculty thing that's running it, but also having student involvement. Uh, su suggested future imp improvements that we also talked about. We talked about doing, instead of just the one date, doing two dates. So doing one in the fall and one in, in the spring. The one in the fall, you could focus more on seniors. That would be, you know, making their decision in the next couple of months. And then in the spring, you could focus on just kind of high schoolers in general, maybe the junior, sophomore level. And then adding some kind of hands-on activity to the day for those students. So just kind of in summary, we talked about what the problem we defined last year was and what the planned solution for that was, and then kind of the behind the scenes planning for that as then we went into the actual visit day, what we did, um, the post-survey results that we got from those students that can be used in the future, and then sustaining the project further. And so I included a whole long list of people that I needed to thank for this. You know, this was something that I definitely could not have done by myself. I had a lot of faculty that helped me, a lot of students that helped me. So I put them all up there. I'm not going to read them all to you, but just making sure that they were recognized for their help. So does anybody have any questions? Yeah. I have a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. um, one, is it, do you know if there's any um, plans for follow-up with these eight students who came? Um, we didn't have any set up kind of right now. You know, I have their contact information. So in the future, if they wanted to get any information from these students, that's definitely a possibility. There's nothing really planned at this time. So it seems like if you have the information for students who are interested in doing some kind of communication mm -hmm. plan to follow up with them, mm -hmm. it would be great. And the other one is, did you, um, or had you thought about surveying the parents um, to see what they thought about the day? I thought about it. I didn't get it done before the day. So, you know, if that's something that could be included in the future or even if they decided relatively soon that they wanted that done, you know, I have those students' contact information. We could email them and say, hey, can you have your parents fill this out and send it back? So that's... I'm just wondering if... Um, because you said that you know the parents had questions and the faculty mm -hmm. were interested and so getting a feel for whether or not the parents have more buy-in to IPFW mm -hmm. might be useful as well. Yeah, okay. Cool. Yeah. I have a comment and question. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, you did an outstanding job. Thank you. Was here. Then, on behalf of the Department of Civil and Mechanical Engineering Department, thank you very much for doing yeah. this one. Thank you, you for outstanding and we are proud of you. Thanks. And the other question I have, mm -hmm. do you think in this kind of event, if we add an alumni to come and to talk about their experience after the graduation, um, I think and it, what they are doing here and how the programs prepare them to work? Yeah, we talked about that earlier this week at the meeting that I held, and I think we kind of decided that including alumni is kind of more important, like after you're in the department so that you can see what opportunities are available from you from IPFW but as a student they're kind of more interested in you know the nitty-gritty of each of the departments that they're looking at that you know their goal right now is just kind of to get into college not so much looking you know four years or more into the future so we were kind of debating that I think at this time we kind of had decided probably not but you know that's definitely a possibility with that since you're going to graduate, let me call you. <laughs> I'd come back. Would you yes. like to participate in that? I would definitely come back. <laughs> we would be so thrilled if you come back and talk to us. You'll miss me. And we would be in contact. <laughs> <laughs> we will. We will miss you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. An alternative, because mm -hmm. now I'm in brainstorming mode, um, is if you have the alumni as some of the others did, if you mm -hmm. use maybe some of the quotes and mm -hmm. stuff to put in the materials that you give people, that might be another way to, to at least go, oh, here's what people are doing mm -hmm. with this. Yeah, I know there are, um, in the hallways and on the third floor, there are a couple posters up there that, you know, has uh, alumni uh, highlights or something. So it kind of tells you a couple things. And as we were walking through the hallways, I kind of pointed those types of things out to those students. But I doubt any of them, you know, stood there and read it. But it's there, so, so that's definitely a possibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. 
Still, we're going to call you. <laughs> <laughs> Nash is determined. <laughs> yeah. I know what you're doing. So. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Uh, so no, I had two questions right now. Uh, one was, uh, I'm interested in the school demographics of people who came. What are they all from? Fort Wayne area schools? Did you have anybody come from out of the city? Um, you know, those three that I knew, they come from my hometown. Um, I know, I saw one that came from Belmont. Um, there was one, that was, I forget where it was from. It was a little bit further away, not too far. But I think most of them are pretty central to this area. But uh, And then sort of combined with that was how what kind of advertising techniques did you have to, to promote the, uh, the, the day? Um, you know, since it took me a little bit to get the flyer and the date in together, I didn't have like a whole lot of time. So primarily I used kind of that email. And then, you know, if I had it ready a little bit earlier, we could have um, put it out at a couple more IPFW events. I know there was that multicultural visit day. Um, I think there was maybe one more that she did. But, you know, if you had that together a lot earlier, then you could reach more of those events. And also, you know, when people, I know even in admissions, there's people that go out and visit colleges, you could kind of send those along with them as well. So, you know, those were kind of the two main avenues that I had used, but there's definitely ways to increase that in the future. Anybody else? All right, thank you. Thank you.